Hey, it's Anfa from anfamusic.com and today I want to show you how to synthesize a simple Reese bass, then make it not so simple. What is a Reese bass at all and, well, how does it sound like? Of course, in Zenit Sub FX. So here we are. I have Baudline enabled to have waveform and um, spectrum view, so we can see what we're doing. Like, this is nice to synthesize sounds or even listen to music that other people did with these tools especially the spectrum analyzer because then we can better understand what you're hearing and this nicely you know rewires your brain to actually see what is the harmonic content of your sounds or or what is the harmonic content of what you hear and that's helpful when you want to design sounds you heard or something similar okay so we have the sub effects i'm quickly going to make a patch uh and then I will explain what I did. So I'm gonna make a saw wave. <clears throat> Get another voice. Use the same saw wave. And now I'm gonna detune this badly. Does it sound familiar? Well, probably it is. That's a Reese bass. Where? What is a Reese bass? It is actually uh, the first Reese bass. Uh, well, the first Reese bass that people talk about that was called a Reese bass had also a very low Lopez Lopez filler, so it sounded more like this. I'm gonna disable velocity sensing here and here, so we get consistent. Um, Filtering and volume. Well, a Reese bass basis on the simple fact that if you get two waveforms, two the same waveforms, uh, and one is slightly faster than the other, they will go the other ways. We can, I think, we can easily see this on our oscilloscope if we make one of these waves in the left channel and another in the right. I just need to find the right pitch. Or maybe, or maybe they are too much detuned, so we can't really see this very well. Well, this oscilloscope doesn't actually give us the better, the best impression of what it is like. But you gotta believe me. Now they are very slightly detuned. So our pulsation is slower. If we detune them, if I detune them more apart, For some reason, Zenit Sub FX default uh, detune type has the limit <laughs> that is very sane. Because it doesn't produce pitches that sound like you're not playing the right in the right key or you're not tuned your instrument. You haven't. Okay, so that's a dark Reese. And this is a bright one. Uh, what I'm gonna do now to make this more interesting. Uh, is change from poly to mono, uh, which makes us unable to play chords. Now if I hold one key and press another, um, the latter one will take precedence and play, we will have just monophonic instrument. And this is what we want, because bass doesn't really like chords. Also, I want to disable portamento. which is the feature that makes the notes slide in pitch. 
between them instead of jump immediately. When you open the controller uh, window, you have the control over whether um, what is the time, how fast the portamento is done. This is rather fast, and you can make it very slow. It also depends. It depends on what you need. Like uh, also, there's a funny thing called the threshold for portamento. And by default, it's set up so uh, the portamento isn't performed when you make slower intervals than this. Here, I make a fifth, and it doesn't use portamento, but, but an octave does. You, you can invert it by deselecting this, and then uh, intervals sl smaller than what you have here. We'll use portamento. And bigger won't. Actually, this isn't an octave. Okay, now it works. Okay, the, the thing is that the threshold works a little bit different in two directions. So, when I had 12 here, uh, making it negative, it worked. If you make it positive, it also works because, well, you need to this make it one lower. Okay, twelve is an octave because it's one hundred cents. One hundred cents is a semitone. Twelve semitones is an octave. If you didn't know this, uh, another funny thing that you can do, especially if you want to perform live this kind of sounds, is to change the range of the pitch bend. Right now it's 200 cents, which means two semitones, one whole tone. But, you can make this 12. Or even 24, which is two octaves. And now I can perform this simply by pressing a key and then using my uh, pitch bend, which is very cool because you have much more expression and you don't depend on the portamento time. You can also combine the two, like use the portamento and also use the pitch, mo pitch wheel. Now this is all your choice. Okay, let's leave this for now and see what we can do to make this more interesting. We have two voices and what if we add a third one right in the middle? We have more phasing. This starts to sound like a super saw. Doesn't it? Actually, what is a super saw? Well, it's kind of the same deal, but you have much, much more of the same and detune it, not two. Well, why we have more, most of the times, Reese's have only two voices. Because then you have the most of the pulsation you, you, you have. Okay, we can actually change the waveform and see what we can get. This is a power wave, and it has more high frequency content than a saw wave, but of course it has to have less frequency, low frequency content, because, you know, the sum of the energy in a waveform cycle needs to stay the same. So it kind of sounds like a high shelf, low shelf, like a tilt EQ, that's adding high frequency, but reducing the low frequency content. We 
could use this, but it's um, actually very, um, very harsh. So I would make it less prominent. Simply make it uh, a little more backed off. And what I want to do is compensate for the lack of low end. So I'm going to add a saw wave. Detune it. And then filter it. Let me show the voice list. I will hide the first two waves. And we can see can use the internal voice free oscillator. So we have external. Oh. Aha. Uh -huh. It didn't change because we're using the external one. But the external one is disabled. We got some funky business here. Look. Ah, yes. Okay, because I was using. Because I was using, um, you know, external oscillators, I got a little bit messed up. I want an internal here. And so here. And then I will reference this so. And the fourth voice. Now disabling the first two. Actually, three. Let's take a look at the third voice. You can see that we have resonance because of this brighter line. Uh, no, not this. I don't want it to resonate so much. But it would be nice to have this sharper. So I'm going to increase the stage number. Okay, it doesn't reese, I mean, it doesn't beat, it doesn't pulsate, because we have just one of this. And we need two, so they face cancel each other, uh, because they, they are different speeds. I think something is clipping. Yeah, probably. Alrighty, so let's enable our first two voices and make them quieter. Also, what we can do is take our high end and change the panning. Like, put the first voice a little bit to the left and the second voice a little bit to the right. And now we have some stereo cha well, stereo image, stereo width. We can make it wider. Looks like the portamento. Yeah, it uses the threshold. I usually just leave this on. So the threshold is like used for notes above and I put it to zero. However, actually, a little free semitone threshold might be nice. How does it work? Like you can actually go a whole tone up or down without having the portamento, but making it free semitones already activates a portamento. can see some uh, like side effect of using the mod wheel that actually we're using 
is changing the playback uh, rate of the uh, internally generated uh, wavetables that are created within AdSynth. All right, well, we can do more. We can, for example, distort this bitch. I will enable stereo. So we have two channels and we can hear our width. And this is left right mix. If it's on the left, there's no effect. If it's in the center, uh, essentially 64, you have mono and the right inverts the left and right channel. And this is interesting if you use dry wet. Because you can actually have the distorted sound uh, have swapped stereo. And this can interact with the non-swapped original dry signal, not distorted. Because also we can filter the distorted signal. And this is what I want to do. I want to cut off the low end. And finally, add some EQ. Well, it kind of looks like it remembers some older things that I've been doing. Let's use a low shelf filter. Up the gain. Now we have more bass. And this is the frequency. Let's make it a little bit more gentle. Alrighty, this is our Reese bass. What else do you want? Well, I want to take one more try at this sound with an entirely different approach. Actually faking what, what this effect is. So I will disable this voice, enable another one, not, not a voice, part, change the MIDI channel, so we can actually play it. And now, I want to do something very weird. Let's do a simple saw wave. And give it a notch filter. Let's make it wider. And give it more stages. And now we have LFO, so it's moving. It draws a nice sine wave, cutting it through from our source saw wave. And now the funny thing is, um, there's LFO stretch. LFO stretch means uh, lower um, LFO frequency on lower notes. This very changed our frequency scale. It's going to compensate. Why this is funny? Well, it doesn't sound nothing like the Reese, but uh, it tries to mimic the phenomenon that, phenom phenomenon that when you play lower notes, um, the, re the orig original Reese bass is, um, is pulsating slower, and on higher notes it's pulsating faster. Okay, this is all for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you want to see more of that, well, subscribe. You can also like this video if you like it. If you want to ask me something or ask for a specific sound tutorial video about something, like, 
just leave it in the comments. Thanks. See you next time. Bye.